good morning good morning why is saying it's july 16th and it's women's dive day so you know what i'm gonna be doing i'm going diving with the ladies i'm here with dx divers and we're gonna go on the lady go diver for women's dive day all the ladies are getting ready and geared up so that we can leave the pier and head out to go hunting for some lionfish We will be diving the ant beds reef first. Let's see how long it takes to get to 95 feet. I hope I'm ready because we're gonna do this descent together. Today I'm diving with Tim and Patricia from Zookeeper. They are sponsoring this dive with prizes for the best dressed mermaid, most lionfish, and most debris. Captain Martha is also diving with us today. The visibility isn't superb, but it isn't bad either. It's pretty dark down here. It's a fairly sunny day, but still early in the morning, so the sun hasn't peaked. We are at 95 feet. That took about a minute and 20 seconds. Are you still with me? We'll be dealing with not so bright lighting conditions, but that's okay because I've got my dive light. Let's see if we can't find some lionfish. When hunting for lionfish, there are a few things you want to keep in mind. Lionfish inhabit the entire water column and have been found anywhere from a few feet of water down to over a thousand feet in depth. In most areas where people have been diving and sparing lionfish with some regularity, so many of the shallow areas have been cleaned up more frequently. On shallow reef, we often find them under ledges and in holes during the day where they like to hide and keep a roof over their heads. A flashlight can be very useful for looking into the larger caves and holes to find the lionfish. And you have to always remember to look up because they are often hanging at the top. I take my time pulling this one out because I'm not sure if the spare is all the way through. I forget that this Gatku pole spare is a lot more powerful than the smaller lionfish pole spare that I normally carry. Next thing to keep in mind is to look right at the base of the reef where the sand meets the structure. This is also a good first place to look because like the one I just caught, the lionfish stands out clearly against the white sand background, but can be much harder to spot tucked up inside of a hole.
I saw two turtles. It was like right in my face. Like, oh. <laughs> There's a real one or a pop. Here comes the boat to pick us up. What we just completed is called a drift dive. Divers buddy up and carry a flag. The boat drops each team into the water a few feet apart or deeper slash shallower water, depending on what they are trying to accomplish. We were going in deeper water, so we got dropped into the deeper side of the reef. Our team was the first down, so as we get back on board, we are the first to surface and get picked up. The captain and dive master keep an eye out for the flags, which should all be flowing in the same direction. Depending on the current in this area that is usually heading north, when they see heads next to the flag, that signals to them that it's time for a pickup. We have taken a surface interval just short of an hour and it's time for dive number two. Shortly after dropping in on this dive, we ran into a long line of rope. On one end was an anchor. Patricia signals to Tim to get his attention. The anchor is in really good shape and you can tell it probably hasn't been underwater very long. While we wait for Tim to swim over, I start following the trail and winding up the rope. That toppled over barrel sponge below is a great example of what kind of damage something like this can cause to the surrounding marine life. I have no idea how long it is, but considering that we were in about 80 feet of water at the time, I'll guess that it was close to 100 feet of line. Remember that with adventure, we are oftentimes led into the unknown. It's the unexpected turns that keep our curiosity peaked. Sometimes a dive can turn into a recovery mission that can bring you value back on the surface. finally looks like we're coming to the other end of this rope. I make a 180 to return to the anchor. If you haven't yet, 
Make sure to hit that subscribe button below to continue with me on these underwater adventures. As I work my way back, you will see that Tim started uh, working on securing the anchor to a lift bag so that it can be sent to the surface. Yeah, that's a whole lot of rope. Let's watch as Tim MacGyver's his way around this uh, anchor. This dive was an intentional lionfish hunt and debris removal dive, so I was prepared with a mesh bag. I start stashing this large rope into the bag so that I can free up my hands for the rest of the dive. I used the four ocean bag I received from taking part in the Darefield Beach pair cleanup a few weeks before. The lift bag has been inflated and with the last few pumps of air, it's anchors away. The anchor has been lifted and is secured to the dive reel line that is being held by Tim. Now that that's done, back to lionfish hunting. They are a lot swifter than they look.
Hello guys, I'm back on land after the Women's Day dive with Lady Go Diver and the DX Divers Dive Shop. It was a pretty good day. I only got two lionfish, but I was donated uh, several other lionfish. So it looks like lionfish for dinner. Might cook something up for you guys. I'll see you in the kitchen. Okay guys, today we're doing some um, fried lionfish whole and some peas and rice. Right now I got the peas and rice bubbling up and I'm about to um, flour the lionfish so that I can put it in a deep fryer. Let's go. I'm gonna go ahead and take these lionfish out the vacuum seal bag and roll them around in some flour. Get them ready for the oil. Pretty plump right now. Most of them. 